Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Strategic Planning Committee. Um, I'm Councillor Barbara Blake. I'm the chair of this committee. If I could get members to introduce themselves, please. Pleasure, Vice Tottenham Hill, Councillor, Vice Chair. Uh, Sean O'Donovan, uh, Tottenham Hill, Councillor. Alex Worrell, Councillor for Stroud Green. Cathy Brennan, Councillor for Muswell Hill. John Bevan, Councillor for Northumberland Park. Councillor Buxton, uh, Councillor for Crouch M Ward. Okay, so we have officers present. If I can get them to introduce themselves, please. Starting on my yeah. Nazia Chowdhury, Democratic Services. Justin Farley, Legal Officer. Robbie McNocker, Head of Development Management and Planning Enforcement. Dennis Yuanu, uh, Building Control at Haringey. Bryce Tubble, Interim Head of Planning Policy, Transport and Infrastructure. Thank you. Um, other um, officers um, uh, will introduce themselves um, if they're in attendance um, virtually. Um, they'll introduce themselves when relevant. Um, can I just ask, these microphones are not always easy, so could we make sure that we do speak into the microphone uh, when we're talking, please? Okay, so we're on to item one, that's filming at meetings. This meeting is being recorded. All registered speakers should be aware that they will be recorded for live or subsequent broadcast via the Council's internet site or by anyone attending the meeting. And item two, which is apologies, and apologies have been received from Councillor Emery and Councillor Ibrahim. Item three, there are no items of urgent business, uh, and so we're on to item four, which is declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations of interest? No? Okay. Thank you. So we're on to item six, which is the minutes of um, the meeting held on the 19th of February. So uh, can we approve the minutes, please? Okay, they're approved. Thank you. So we're on to item seven, um, which is the planning and building control 2023-24 update, and that starts on page seven, please. Thanks. Chair, I'll just go first in terms of the development management and planning enforcement updates. Um, so starting at paragraph 5.2, just highlighting um, the performance overall for the year. So 100% for majors um, and 88% for minors and others and 98% for um, the PSOs and, and PS1s. So that's um, an improvement on, on last year's stats for minors and others, which is positive. Um, in terms of the um, performance measures that the um, government uh, looks at in terms of designation, um, all positive there um, on page nine, just showing that we're um, well away from the, the relevant thresholds. On page 10, no um, recent major appeal um, decisions going against us um, and um, very safe on the um, quality of decisions overturned. So that's all quite positive. Um, then on page 11, 5.4, um, we determined 22 majors um, compared to 16 last year, which is um, positive getting um, those decisions out. Um, that has brought the average decision day um, up slightly, um, but that's due to the backlog work that we've been doing, and I'll um, come on to that in a bit more detail. Um, then turning to page 12, just the um, average days to decide a planning application, so showing an increase, but again, um, a symptom of the um, backlog work um, <clears throat> and for the, the current uh, year that those numbers are um, are starting to show some improvement. Um, then on paragraph um, <clears throat> 5.7, um, just a, a positive note in terms of the time it's taking to validate a planning application. So um, for last year that was down nine to 19 days from 37 days um, due to faster allocation of those. Um, and at 5.8, just to note that the caseloads for officers um, are reducing now, down um, 56 per officer from 60 last year, um, as the backlog has, has taken the overall um, numbers down. 
Um, and then at 5.13, just to note, um, we finished the year with 671 pending applications, which is down from 725. So that's um, backlog work having a positive um, impact there. Um, and we've seen a reduction um, in paragraph 5.14 in the um, over 26 week applications. Um, so that's um, 98 at the, at the sort of last um, check of that. And we're now monitoring the over 16 week applications. There's, there's 24 um, of those. So those are the ones that are eligible for the fee to be refunded. And we're closely monitoring that and um, aiming to get that down. Then turning to pre-app advice and the income there, um, 5.17. Um, so showing um, that despite having lesser numbers of, of pre-application meetings um, last year, um, we did um, increase our income um, by roughly um, 10,000. Um, and then the same with uh, householders, um, a slight decrease in numbers, but um, an overall increase in income. Um, planning performance agreements um, showed quite a big increase on, on last year um, as activity um, has, has picked up again, so 760,000 compared to 380 uh, in the previous year. And then just um, moving on to um, <clears throat> one of the designations we've been monitoring quite closely at, at 5.25. Um, <clears throat> as we've had no um, appeal overturns, we're um, at 0% for that, so um, well clear of the 10% threshold from the government. <coughs> Excuse me. And then turning to planning enforcement, um, I received um, 605 complaints compared to the previous year of, of 532, um, served more notices, um, 51 compared to 47, and that brought us to 11th in the country for issuing enforcement notices. So um, despite increasing those, we, we just missed out on the on the top 10, um, but great to be um, on that sort of top table of enforcement teams. Um, and then um, we're monitoring this, the time taken to um, decide on cases more closely now and um, showing positive results there. So that's um, improved to 47% on time um, compared to 39 last year. Um, and we're closely watching um, the cases that haven't had a decision on those yet. Um, and then at 5.28, um, just to note that we've seen quite a big influx of HMO referrals. Um, so through the licensing scheme, more of those are coming to planning to be checked and, and reviewed to make sure that and they have the necessary planning permission. So that is putting a bit of a strain on the team and we're just working through that um, at the moment. And at 5.29, some positive news on the um, proceeds of crime income where um, people are operating a, an illegal flat in um, breach of a planning enforcement notice. Um, so <clears throat> we've had a, an award of uh, 226,000 um, against a landlord um, for uh, operating in breach of an enforcement notice. Um, so that obviously goes back into funding further enforcement work. And um, we had our first direct action case uh, last year. So we, we, in the end, we, we didn't actually have to take um, direct action, but the, um, we came very close to it. And that's, that threat was enough um, for the um, house owner to um, demolish their extension um, as required by the enforcement notice. And then um, just another piece of work that's been going on, and we've been working with colleagues um, in um, ASB enforcement, looking at uh, disused BT phone boxes and our work so far on that has um, resulted in the removal of two of those boxes, um, threatening to use planning powers if um, BT don't remove these redundant um, pieces of kit that um, are creating antisocial behaviour. Um, and then um, just a note on member training and site visits, we um, completed one on, on Friday um, and um, always open to um, suggestions for further training. Um, I think a, a visit to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is, is penciled in for the 5th of July, which is the day after the general election. Um, and then just finally at 5.35, we um, have been awarded £100,000 of digital planning and improvement fund money. So, um, so far we've completed what's known as a digital maturity assessment. So looking at our processes and, and digital systems um, and we'll be moving forward to the next stage of that shortly. Um, and that's everything from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor O'Donovan, do you want... They've been printed off. I know you're looking, but yes. you may as well use it. Okay, uh, and there's a... Has everybody else got a copy? 
is a long drawn out process. Can it not be shortened without losing any value to the process? Uh, other councils operate a, a sort of shorter process, but um, our process is to front load things. So although things wait um, longer at the start, we generally are, are hitting our targets. So that allows us to triage them and screen them and check them quite early on. Whereas <clears throat> if you use someone um, just to sort of check it for all the necessary information and, and um, whiz it through, you don't get that um, scrutiny in terms of whether it's acceptable or not, which allows us to feed back to applicants quite early in the process and hopefully um, shorten the whole process. Councillor Bevan. Yeah, on at 511, it refers to 230 uh, a backlog. Yeah. But at 512, it refers to 275. Just clarify that. And then about the local plan, this is an observation. Some councillors have been made aware that the local plan is planning to change the allocation of new housing, which has been set in the past to ensure that more social housing is built in the west and the east, is planning to delete that requirement, which the councillors that I've spoken to are not supportive of and are not aware of that change because the aim was to try and lessen I know it would be to a minor extent to lessen the amount of social housing being built in the east and and try and level it up with the west so i'm just raising that for your concern because i know the local plan is still in process but the councillors that i discussed that with were not aware of it and are not supportive of that that action Yeah. yeah, so I think um, I'll leave that um, for Bryce to pick up um, in his um, item. Um, just in terms of the backlog, so yes, um, you're correct that we um, started with 230 applications we, we'd identified as, as backlog, um, and then we actually determined 275 <clears throat> using that funding. So um, basically some new backlog came in, um, <clears throat> and we determined that using the backlog funding. So um, it, it's a sort of, um, you know, an element of, of, of firefighting and, and catching up and getting back on top of things. So some things did go over time and we were able to sort of pull them back in time and, and get the decision out again, which reduces the, the overall backlog by slightly more than we'd anticipated. So just to take the local plan point, so the current policy seeks the same target percentage of affordable housing across the entire borough. 40%. In relation to the new local plan, there's no decision that's been taken yet. In fact, open to another discussion with new local plan member working group in relation to that. Uh, based on discussions we've had so far, we weren't proposing to set a different housing target in different parts of the borough in terms of the target affordable housing percentage. The current local plan does aim for a different tenure mix of affordable housing within the Tottenham AOP area. Um, still open to a discussion about whether or not that remains the case, but no decisions have been taken at this stage, certainly, and won't be for uh, a number of months. So I can assure you there's been no decision on that front. Yeah, that's the issue I was referring to, because the councillors that I've spoken to are supportive of the existing and not making that change. Helpful to know there's a range of views, um, and yeah, I'm very open to a further discussion about this at the New Look Plan Member Working Group, which we do intend to start up again fairly shortly. Councillor Brennan, um, not about the local plan, because we're coming on to that in a minute, aren't we? So if it's a question about the local plan, I'll... right, just, just hold on a minute and I'll bring you in in a minute, because we're moving on to the local plan in a minute. So, um, right, I've got, so if it's about the local plan, no, okay, so Councillor O'Donnell. Follow up actually to, to the answer you gave to Councillor Worrell. Um, you mentioned HMOs and there was a slightly different regulation in relation to the east and the west of the borough. Um, could you confirm how the east and the west of the borough is, um, is proposed in terms of, of planning? Has it changed in relation to um, the change of the 
the CLP boundaries, so I'm particularly thinking about the, the central part of the borough, um, Wood Green, Bounds Green, Woodside, do they fall under the east or the west? So, oh, yeah, so the, um, the, the boundary of that um, Article 4 extra control is the railway line, so um, that takes wood grain um, into that, and there are some pockets in the west that um, have been controlled through that, um, where, where there were seen to be issues, I believe. If, if I might just add, so um, I've actually had a lot of discussions around HMOs in the last few weeks, um, and I think we would be in a good position to have a really substantive discussion at the new local line member working group around that. There's a lot of data we can share with you, which has been produced for um, the private rented sector housing team. Um, so that I think would be a helpful discussion. But Robbie's correct. The article direction applies to the east of the uh, East Coast main line, so covering some of the wards you've mentioned, Knoll Park, Woodside, etc. Councillor Brennan. Sorry, um, it is on this last point on the HMOs, and I, I expect you've got this covered, but we have HMOs in Muswell Hill, it's very west, and we have a serious amount of HMOs which are not licensed, and I want them licensed because we're having, the conditions are terrible. And I just want to throw that in the mix. Thank you for that, Councillor Worrell. And then I think you wanted to come in again. Yeah. Okay, so Councillor Worrell first, and then you, Councillor. Thanks. Uh, just... At 5.35, so we've been awarded this money, but then it says we're reviewing whether to allocate funding to improve the service. So I just wanted to clarify, does that mean that we would also have to find additional money to put in in order to sort of make use of that grant, essentially? Thank you. So um, <clears throat> it, by that we mean um, where to focus it within the service. So um, the digital maturity assessment asked a range of questions about to, to really look at um, how far advanced you are in terms of um, digital planning on, on certain issues. So um, we'll have scored well on some things and, and less on others. Um, and it's really a decision of which of those things that we're not performing well in do we focus the money on. So um, we're only spending um, this funding um, on that project we're not drawing in any of our own i think if you replace the word weather with where then it's a more accurate picture of the actual situation with that funding it was a weird it is a weird form of words i must admit digital maturity i mean is that some clapped out old machinery or something <laughs> but uh, councillor rice thank you how many agency staff does the, your department employ over the last year? I had this spreadsheet open and I think I closed it just before the meeting. Um, so a, I think it's 12 at the moment. Um, and uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it, that there is a sort of corporate push to um, reduce that, that um, we're partaking in. So we're looking at um, halving that to um, six in the next few months, um, so making quite good progress on that already. Okay, um, I just wanted to just clarify 5.8. So are, are our, the caseloads for our officers average in, with other boroughs or would, are they higher? I mean, what's our caseloads like? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, I th I'd say they're probably about average. We, we try to um, run things a, a bit more dynamically um, and in terms of what Councillor Rice was talking about, they, we will sit with a batch of applications and allocate them more when there, there's capacity so that, that keeps our caseloads per officer slightly lower but overall the, you know, the, the number um, is, is larger um, so I think 60 is probably manageable though there will be authorities in London that, that are, are going beyond that. Um, and probably not many that are running at less than that. Right, okay, thank you. So, any more questions on this report? No? Okay, so we'll move on to... All right. So, moving on to page 20. That's new local plan. I think, is that over to you, Bryce? Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you, um, Chair. So um, those of you with a good memory will recall the playing service peer challenge, uh, the report of which was received uh, at the start of the year or the end of last year. One of the actions within that report was to uh, come up with a uh, detailed timetable for the delivery of the new local plan, um, having regard to various challenges uh, within the service and also a lot of other activity happening within the council. Um, so uh, an update today is that we've now been through that detailed planning process and the, tamed, uh, the timetable um, published um, within the report at 5.36 is uh, what we consider to be um, deliverable with the resources currently available to us. So the key milestones will be to uh, get cabinet approval to consult on a draft local plan uh, by the end of this year. Uh, with a view to heading to adoption before the um, local government elections in 2026. In relation to the actual uh, work involved with the production of the local plan, it continues to be at an advanced stage. The focus at the current time is uh, particularly around um, site allocations and the development of those, and there's probably going to be in the region of 100 plus, so it's a significant number. Um, we had another funding success um, in the last uh, six to eight weeks where we managed to secure some money from the government to support some of that work uh, and to bring to bear some uh, artificial intelligence to um, reduce the uh, man and woman hours uh, it would take to, to prepare that. So uh, I'll come on to that um, shortly. We are keen to discuss the site allocations with the New Local Band Member Working Group. Um, so there are site allocations across the borough for a variety of uses uh, and very shortly I'll be contacting you to program in those meetings and they'll run along a similar line to uh, previous meetings we've had in uh, recent years. So there's an update in here in relation to the uh, London plan and some of the back and forth between uh, the government and uh, the Mayor of London in relation to that. So at the end of last year, the uh, government um, decided to um, organise uh, a review of the London plan by a group of external advisors, expert advisors appointed by the government. Uh, and it was specifically looking at uh, what more the London plan could do or what it could do better to facilitate the delivery of new homes on brownfield sites. Um, that was uh, a fairly short and sharp um, commission for the people on the panel. Um, and they reported back a couple of months later um, a couple of things which they mentioned in their report, I won't mention them all, but they said that the London plan is not the sole source of the problem when it comes to housing delivery in London, so obviously there's a wider set of factors involved. But they did raise an issue with um, the volume of policies in the London plan. I believe there's over 120 covering a variety of areas, and they thought that that might be a potential constraint on delivery of particularly brownfield uh, housing um, delivery. Their principal recommendation was uh, an overarching um, policy in the, the London plan um, to really focus the mind of uh, planning decision makers uh, on supporting the delivery of um, housing on brownfield um, land. Subsequent to that, the government published a consultation. So this is changes the government would like to make to the MPPF uh, in order to uh, strengthen planning policy for uh, brownfield development. But um, as you'll be aware, the vast majority of development in this borough um, and indeed across London is already brownfield development. So the extent to which that will really uh, deliver more homes in uh, London is um, a, a kind of a very valid um, question. Uh, and then following that in March, the government um, asked the Mayor of London to uh, carry out a um, partial review of part of the London plan. Uh, particularly directing the mayor to look at the supply of um, industrial land and whether some of the industrial land which is currently protected for industrial uses um, could be repurposed for um, housing. Um, so that's a bit of work underway by the, um, the GLA. Then lastly, I did mention around some funding we've secured um, to support the delivery of the uh, local plan. Uh, it was a joint funding bid with the neighbouring borough of Barnet, but a bid that we're leading on uh, and we've secured £225,000, um, and that is to deliver a digital solution to what was previously uh, a manual exercise of looking in detail at the sites we have available for development in the borough uh, and looking what they could potentially deliver under a kind of design-led um, kind of um, approach. Once upon a time, we had a very basic calculator called the London Density Matrix, which uh, came up with uh, an approximation of what you could get on site based on uh, where it is 
uh, and what you're looking to deliver on there and building heights that might be achievable. Um, we're now expected by the MPPF and the London plan to do a much more detailed and refined exercise, uh, which would involve a person looking in detail at a site for probably half a day to a whole week, depending on the nature of the site. If you've got 100 sites, that's up to 100 weeks of work for one person, so a big exercise. And we're now looking at whether uh, AI, artificial intelligence, can do part of that job for us, speeding up the process of delivering the local plan, but also reducing costs to the council. Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, right, I'm going to bring you in first, Councillor Brennan. Okay, well, I'm just I'm I'm just following up on um, Councillor Bevan, really, because um, while I understand the wish to build less social housing in the east, I really am concerned that there aren't very many brownfield uh, sites necessarily in the west. And I think it's more important that we do get as much social housing as possible. I, don't, I really don't want to sort of like put a break on that because we're trying to not have too much social housing in the East. We need social housing full stop. That is, I just thought I'd throw that into the view. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm, we're just gonna note that for now, but that was what you were saying in response, yeah. Uh, okay, all right, Councillor. Listen to the radio four this morning at breakfast time, and the, the presenter was talking about a grey field site in, as opposed to a brown field site. What's a grey field site? Uh, a grey field site would um, include, um, for instance, developed sites within the green belt. So um, there's a bit of a misnomer around the green belt that uh, the Labour government is, well, the Labour Party is trying to move away from. Um, if you take, for instance, the um, former Petra filling site as you go out of uh, Tottenham Hale towards um, Black Horse Road, um, that would be your prime example of Greyfield. It's technically in the green belt, uh, but it's a previously developed site. It's a great site. So th those are the sorts of sites the government has in mind. Um, there are sites like that all across the country. Um, they're designated green belt, but they've they've been built on in the past, or they contain hard standing. Councillor Warren. Thank you. I just wanted to ask uh, in regard to the sort of ongoing process of the local plan. Um, I suppose how much of what's already been done is kind of already locked in and how much is still up for discussion and particularly with regard to the member working groups I think while I've been a councillor we've kind of gone through that process twice um, and when we start that up again is it going to be that essentially we're discussing everything again and any views that we have we need to bring them to the table or can we assume that previous conversations have already sort of been taken on board and taken into account. Thanks. As a starting point, we'd like to ensure that the member working group is a good use of everyone's time. Um, I think based on previous conversations we've had, there's a lot of consensus in relation to key topics, uh, housing, affordable housing, uh, the local economy, um, the climate emergency. So not proposing to uh, go over that ground extensively unless people want to. Uh, in some cases, we might have new evidence that we can bring to you, which might help facilitate a more granular conversation. Uh, I very much intend that future discussions will be based around sites um, where we think very carefully about what we want to deliver in our neighbourhoods going forward. So getting into the, the weeds, essentially, about what we're going to deliver on key sites. Any more questions? If I could just add one um, point, um, Councillor Blake, in relation to Councillor Brennan's point, um, I just mentioned the Council's adopted housing strategy, uh, so that's not produced by my team, but um, that does set out a uh, strong preference for the delivery of social housing, so that is the Council's adopted position. Um, so our starting point in relation to the local plan would be that we look to be consistent with that, so it's just one thing to bear in mind. Um, and I just, um, on paragraphs 5.46 and 5.47, which uh, the way I read those was it's about how we, we identify land and, and using 
specific assessments to do that. So we've, we've got, is that right? Am I reading this right? That we've got 120K for two years and 60,000 for design to, to help us with that. Is that correct? So um, in terms of the, the site side of things, so um, the starting point is to identify sites that might be available for de development in the future. Um, we've got quite, a, I mean, we're a relatively small borough, 11 square miles. We've got a relatively good idea of what sites might be available in the future. Um, so that's the identification side of things. Um, we actually ran a, a second call for sites, uh, which closed around a week ago to just see if there's anything we'd missed. Uh, or if anyone had changed their mind about what they've told us about previously in terms of their plans for their sites. So the next stage is around site assessment, and this is thinking carefully about, well, what can we deliver on these sites, and are these the best outcomes? So that's what this is designed to support, the assessment of sites and their potential capacity. Historically, it's been a very manual task, meaning it's very um, time-consuming and very expensive. So we're looking to see whether technology can help facilitate a quicker process, so the £120,000 is principally to cover the licensing of uh, buying in this technology that can do the assessments much quicker than we can. Um, and then the £60,000 is about two things. It's about uh, backfilling the time um, involved in uh, people in my team delivering this project. Um, so getting in people that can work on projects that they'll have to put aside for, for a short period. And then there's also some specialist support we might need around design. Um, we probably do have the expertise in-house, but maybe not the capacity. And then we also would like this tool or this project to look at whether outcomes on sites are viable. Um, so there's a financial part of it. So we might like to see 60 units delivered on a site, but it might not be viable. So it will help inform what the art of the possible. So that's what it's about. Great, thank you. Thanks for that. So, Councillor O'Donovan. Thank you. Um, page 22 goes into quite a lot of detail about the technology you'll be using and the funding you've got for that technology um, and how you'll be um, working across planning, housing and, and regeneration. I mean, is it possible um, to have some sort of uh, possible display um, uh, presentation to the committee in relation to the technology that, that you're using in order that we, we have an idea of, of how, how that does affect the way that we're working in relation to all those different areas of the council. Um, and also in terms of the, the local plan consultation, you mentioned winter 24. I mean, would that be November, December 24? Is that where you're thinking about? I can understand why you may not want to rush at the moment to it, because with the new possible new government, there will there will probably be changes in relation to local plans and the London plan, et cetera. Um, but it would be good if we were able to to tell organisations and residents where we are in the process. And if we can say that there will be something that will be available for people to see November, December, at the end of this year, that would be really useful. Thank you. So just in relation to your first question, uh, yes is the answer to that. Um, probably not for this meeting, but for the New Local Member Working Group, we would be very happy to uh, give you a test drive. Uh, I'm a bit of a Luddite myself, so it'll be one of my colleagues, but they can show you what that um, technology can do and how we intend to use it. And uh, we would welcome your views also uh, on the methodology we use, uh, because ultimately we're providing the inputs as the Local Plan Authority and the technology is doing, us, do, doing what we tell it to. On the second point, um, I will be trying my absolute hardest to get a cabinet decision on the local plan by uh, the end of 2024. Um, whether or not we get out for consultation before the end of the year will uh, depend on a few things, but the aim will be to get that cabinet decision in November or December. Any more questions? No? Okay, so we'll move on to Building control, that's page 23, and that's Dennis Yuanu. That's near it, near. Okay, no, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, building controls applications are slightly below previous years, um, although our market share in competition with private inspectors has stabilised um, at the 40% mark. Um, although there is still some concern that under the new Thank you. 
under the new um, regulatory regime, under the building safety regulator, um, that market share might may come under threat again. Um, we at Building Control um, do have a number of housing schemes that we're involved with, and we um, continue to work um, on them within the borough. Um, and um, we, as local authority, are the go-to building control advisor for the new building safety regulator. In terms of dangerous, dangerous structures, um, more or less the same uh, numbers as previous years. Um, and we're um, always available um, in doubt of hours to attend dangerous structure call-outs when required. Um, we do need to know, though, um, when we're dealing with dangerous structures, they, um, they are normally dealt with um, by a company we use called uh, Waits, um, and that comes with an initial cost to ourselves, um, and um, we then have to reclaim that back um, off the owner or the, um, the person responsible for that building. Just a brief summary of where we are in terms of the building control regime and the building act. Um, it's an ongoing process at the moment and um, where we stand at the moment is that uh, uh, the new building safety regulator is now, now controls building control both for private and um, local authorities. Um, as of the 6th of July, um, the, we will be required to um, have um, competency levels in order to operate um, as a building control department. Um, at the moment, our office has one class three um, inspector who's able to then deal with the high rise um, and the, the high risk buildings um, and is able to supervise the, the people who haven't achieved their competency yet. Um, although we do have three other surveyors in the office um, who are currently going through that, uh, the competency exams and, and awaiting results. Um, this um, has come to a great cost to the individual staff members and more responsibility as the building safety regulator um, um, deals with the individual surveyor as opposed to the authority. Um, and and um, individually, we are subject to prosecution and as a department, if we're not performing our function. We, are, we have lost four members of staff in the last year um, through retirements and due to the new regime where um, um, surveyors um, did, weren't able or didn't want to go through the new um, competency um, assessments, um, which has meant that we are looking to recruit um, at the moment. We, we have, uh, an, and unfortunately, it's mainly going to be through uh, agencies um, because that's the only people available out there at the moment. Um, the previously, my previous um, colleague Bob McIver has run through the risks, the ongoing risks associated with the new regime, um, and I've just touched on those. Um, so, if surveyors fail to prove their competency, um, um, again, we're, we're subject to um, prosecution, um, as bit, which, where we're now a regulated profession. Um, and there's the risk of losing further staff to other building control bodies and, and, and um, struggling to recruit at the moment. The biggest risk is that Haringey may not be able to fulfil its statutory function um, to provide a building control service, although we hope that won't happen. Um, we have set ourselves up where we do have a class three surveyor and we're looking to recruit now from um, the bottom up. So we have two trainees working with us um, and uh, one, uh, one trainee working with us and one due to start on the 1st of July. Um, At present, because of the change in the regime, we're looking to reevaluate the job profiles of surveyors um, or registered building inspectors, as we're now called, um, to reflect the new roles and responsibilities. Um, and um, also um, to ho hopefully recruit um, 
surveyors just to resolve the immediate issues. Um, that's it. Any questions? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, Councillor you say that Harrogate may not be able to fulfil its requirement on the new reg regulations. What actually are you doing about it? Uh, at the moment, um, Councillor, we're all going through the competency process to ensure that we have um, um, competent staff under the new regime to be able to perform that function. Uh, and we're also looking at our quality management systems to enable to us for us to report back to the building safety regulator um, so that we're not seen as a risk borough uh, where they will come in and investigate. Where are you from doing what you're supposed to be doing at this level? In terms of having registered inspectors, um, we have uh, one class three already as a registered inspector and three that are awaiting results um, from the ex um, um, with regards to having taken exams. Pastor Bevan. Yeah, well, powers 551 to 555 show, what shall I say, how this service could easily collapse. And I'm referring to all of the London councils because it wouldn't be just this one. This problem must be everywhere. It's really horrendous. So you've got my sympathy. I think if you've got three people, we're awaiting results of their exams. Can we be advised of those results when they come? Of course. And then also, I, know, I remember at the last meeting, the other director, Rob, in my words, expressed his frustration about the job re-evaluation how complicated it was, how it takes forever in Haringey. Mm. I don't want to get him into trouble, but he clearly expressed that view. And I notice you've said it as well, and in this paper, it says the job evaluation of these crucial jobs for this department, a small department, is still not done. I mean, I think, I think we should pass a motion or something to go to the chief exec, or, or we should, you know, this is, this is ridiculous that Six months ago, your director was expressing his frustration, and now, in this crucial situation, it's still not done. I mean, I don't know what powers we have as a committee to, to call the chief exec to account or whatever, but I think we should do something. Thank you for your support, um, Councillor Bevan. We're um, also speaking to our in-house legal and HR teams to see what support they could offer um, in terms of um, any pending prosecution from the building safety regulator. I think, I mean, I'm going to say, it, perhaps I shouldn't say it, but HR is sometimes seen as a problem in this council. So, if you're relying on them, I mean, is that part of the problem? But I, I feel we need to do something. Well, um, can we, do you, if I can talk to Robbie and Dennis, maybe outside of the this meeting and let's see what we can do. And then we can bring it back to the committee in terms of just so I can get a, a, a real grip of what's going on and the situation outside of this committee. Is that all right, Councillor Bevan? And then so you'll send us a, a sort of little update, not at the, for the next meeting, because that's ages yeah, away, we, sort of within a few weeks or yeah, something. Yeah, we'll send an update within a few weeks. Yeah, is that is that all well, right? Well, if the other yeah. committee members are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let let you just so that because I just want to get my my head completely mm -hmm. around what's happening and what the future is. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Any other questions, please? No? Okay, all right. Um, that's good. Thank you very much. So, so is, is, that's all part of that report, is it? Can I just, that's not a separate, that's all part of the building control. Yes, yeah, okay. All right, so um, there are no other questions. So the recommendation is that this report is noted. Do we note the report, please? Noted? Okay, thank you. Well, what decision do... Oh, what? 
Well, I've, I've asked, do we move to the recommendation? The recommendation is that we note the reports, and that's what we've, we've done. We've noted the report. Uh, Councillor Rice, I can't hear you. You've got, you haven't got your microphone on. Look, you asked the meeting to agree that a small group will get together and see what solutions can be made in this department. No, you, I didn't. I, what I said was... You need what, to have it written down. It's being recorded. What, what, I, what I said was I would speak to Robbie and to Dennis outside of this meeting. I want to get my head around uh, everything Dennis has said um, and that we will provide the committee with an update within um, um, a couple of weeks about about this. So that's that's what the committee was happy with. That's what we've agreed. So we've agreed the recommendations. Uh, so we're now moving on. There's item 13. There's um, no items of urgent business. Um, and then we're on to the date of the next meeting, which is the 17th of October. OK. Councillor Bevan. Sorry, Chair, I, I missed one item. Could I just ask for an update on the phone box removals, five, uh, 531? A, a, an email update, you unless you want to talk about it now and the Chair will allow you to. Uh, probably requires a bit of discretion, so better to, to um, update you through email. OK, all right. So um, thank you for that. The date of the next meeting is the 17th of October, and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.